Hi, this is Margaret Bird, and welcome to the Cochineal Express here on Color Quest. We have been working with Cochineal the last several weeks, and today is our last video where we're going to experiment one final time with this incredible scale insect. We looked at shifting the color of cochineal because it's pH sensitive, both acidic and alkaline, but I wanna shift it one more way and we're gonna do that today. And that's with iron, one of my favorite modifiers out there and one that tends to darken colors. So let's see what iron wants to do when it dances with our bug friends known as cochineal. So as we've been shifting colors on the pH scale with cochineal, we have used two different ways in which to do that. Initially, we were putting our modifier right into the dye bath. We did that with the cream of tartar and we did that with the citric acid when we shifted it to the acidic side. When I worked last week on alkaline, I struggled. I really did. And I just tried all different kinds of ways. And while I was doing that, I decided that one of the things that might be impacting the shift of color was that there just wasn't enough cochineal already adhered to the fiber. So I did a third try, as you probably saw, where I started with a dyed fiber and then put it into an after bath of the alkaline solution. And it definitely worked differently and I got a deeper color. So today I thought, you know what? We're working with iron. I almost always show you iron as an after bath because I like to work with it that way. But today let's do both. Let's shift some cochineal with iron right in the pot, start with some neutral fiber, and then let's also dye some fiber with cochineal and then put it in an after bath of iron. And let's see what differences they're going to bring to us. I just love experimenting and I'm pretty confident that we're going to get very different results. So iron has two different jobs in the natural dyers world. One is that it's a color modifier. It shifts the color, it darkens colors, and it will interact with tannins to where you can make really dark grays and blacks using iron. The other thing iron does is that it is a mordant. So if you're using iron, you know that it's going to help with the bond of the dye matter to the fiber. Now today, we're going to be using fiber in two ways. One is we're gonna be dyeing with cochineal. So because I'm going to be using cochineal first, I am going to do fiber prep with a pre-treatment of a mordant for that one. However, for the other one, I could actually not even use a mordant because the iron will act that way. So when I put the iron into the dye bath, I'm basically doing an in-the-pot mordant process that's a combo with dyeing. It's pretty efficient. It is just something that you can keep in mind. Iron is just a really amazing tool and I love using it in so many different ways. So fiber prep, you know, but I'm gonna say it again in case you're new here. We need to wash our fibers. Always wash your fibers, you can do it in the washing machine, you can do it on the stovetop with some mild detergent, or you can go through the scouring process, which is a much deeper clean, which you can use things like washing soda, soda ash, or commercial grade products like Synthropol. 
All of those are great options. You need to decide for yourself what you wanna do in your own practice, and it may be dependent upon the kinds of fibers that you're working with. So get those fibers clean. Then you can do a pre-treatment of a mordant, which I almost always do here, or in this instance, we're also gonna be looking at the iron as a mordant option. And you know, you're not gonna hurt yourself by doing both. And in this video, we will be doing both for the pieces that will be in cochineal first. But know that you can also pre-treat your fibers with iron. That is an option. And if you do that, you know that when you put it into the dye bath, you're already gonna get that modified color. So many different choices, so many different ways, and you end up with so many different results. Just love it. So get your fiber prepped. Now, before anything goes into a dye pot, what do you gotta do? You need to make sure it's wet. It's coming straight from your mordant bath and it's already wet, fantastic. If you are working with dry fiber, something that you've already pre-treated and cleaned, but stored and it's dry, put it in water. Just let it soak for like an hour before you use it. You're gonna be much happier and the fibers are just better prepared to welcome whatever dye you're going to be presenting it with. Let's go. Let's get to working with our iron. So when I work with iron, I have dedicated utensils just for iron. So I always have gloves to work with, as well as a dedicated spoon, spatula, something that I only use in my iron baths. I have this bowl that you've seen many times. This is my iron bowl. And then something I haven't really ever showed you is that I also have an iron pot. And that is that it's not iron itself, but this is the pot that I do all of my work in if I'm going to actually put iron into the dye pot. I often, almost always actually, use an after soak or an iron bath cold soak. But since today we're gonna look at both of this as well as one in the dye pot, I figured I'd show you this very well loved and iron clad pot. So here's my iron powder. I keep it in another bag just to keep any bits of powder from flying around. It does have a way of migrating and it's really strong. So I often will use an eighth of a teaspoon in this bowl with water to do my baths. Today, I'm actually gonna use even less. I'm barely dyeing any fiber. So I'll probably only use a half of this, so a 16th of a teaspoon. And then I'm actually going to put some of this bath into the dye pot with dye as well. So that should be sufficient. So this is the exhaust bath from what I use to dye that first round of fiber that we're gonna be putting in the iron bath. So I'm simply gonna add a little bit of dye from my master dye pot. Give a little more volume, not a lot. And then I'm gonna add the iron right into this. You'll see how it changes.
one thing about heating iron in your dye pot, I kept the temperature quite low. And the reason for that is because there are going to be fumes and you just wanna be careful when you're working with iron. One of the benefits to working with it cold as a cold bath, an after bath, is that there's no risk that you're going to have any of those fumes coming into the air. You might decide if you do something on a stove top at a very low heat with iron that you have your fan running and you could even wear a mask. But know that you can always do a cold after soak no matter what. So how much fun is that? Two completely different ways to work with iron and what looks like two completely different results. So let's take a look at those now. I am so excited by this difference. Now I didn't get super dark purples like I thought I might, but look at this. So this side is the cochineal that was altered right in the bath with the iron. This is the cochineal that was dyed first and then put in an iron bath after. Look at the differences. Incredible, right? There was a uniformity in the dye results here. They all kind of have the same tone of that sort of lavender purple. I wouldn't say that one dyed more strongly than the other. In fact, I would say that my wool actually took the least amount but know that when you work with iron, you have to be careful with things like silk and wool because it will change the fiber's integrity. So you don't wanna use it too terribly much. Now, look at this with an after. It carries more of its original tone, I think, but it still shifted it. It toned it down and look at that. The silk absolutely loved it. And look at those two silks together. I mean, gorgeous. Now, interestingly enough, our cotton performed somewhat like our first tries with the acidic shift, and it was very, very light. So although we had a cochineal start on this, it wasn't super strong, and then it really doled it out. So it ended up with a pretty light result. Regardless, I can't say I'm disappointed. That is a remarkable change of color and very different from all of the experiments we've done using Cochineal. Wow. Thank you so much, you sweet little bugs. So in the pot iron or an after bath of iron, do you have a preference on that one? I'm not sure that I preferred one over the other, to be honest with you. I definitely thought we got a better result last week when we did that with the alkaline, but I actually think that both of these processes today gave us really remarkable colors. So you probably now wanna see all of the cochineal together, but you're gonna have to wait I would like to come back next week looking at all of the different colors that we got thanks to Cochineal as well as share all of the Cochineal that I have been fortunate enough to dye over the past years while traveling to Mexico and Peru. The color spectrum I have from Cochineal 
is amazing. And I'd like to show you how many more colors are possible. It really is an endless possibility when you work with natural color and when you work with something so diverse as cochineal. If you have enjoyed these videos with cochineal, get out there and get some. Try it in your own dye studio. It really is such a spectacular dye source. I hope that you've enjoyed this. If so, you know what I want. Thumbs up, maybe subscribe if you haven't already, share with your friends, all that good stuff. Growing our community here at Color Quest just makes it that much more fun. So thank you for being here and I can't wait to see you next week on our last video all about Cochinelle. See you next Friday. Two jobs in the natural dyers world. One is, oof, got some in my eye. Okay, okay, <laughs> better. <laughs>